Bullying is a common problem in the community that needs to be understood and addressed. It is a contagious social disease. Bullies get older just like the rest of us. One older adult said to me that it's like being in junior high all over again, only you never graduate. Hello, my name is Marsha Frankel. I am a social worker at Jewish Family and Children's Service in Waltham, Massachusetts. I've been studying and working on the issue of bullying amongst older adults for the past 10 years. I want to encourage you to take this issue of bullying seriously. You are in a position to set a positive tone and make a difference in the lives of older adults. This brief training has three objectives. First, we'd like to identify key characteristics of social bullying among older adults. Secondly, we want to distinguish between bad behavior and bullying. And third, and most importantly, we want to learn strategies to address social bullying. You might witness this at meal sites, parties, bingo, or other community activities in your setting. While we understand that most older adults do not bully, depending on the setting, estimates are that 10 to 50% of elders experience bullying in the last year. This is very problematic as it splits the community and has serious consequences for the person that is targeted. Throughout the workshop, we will use the following three terms. A person who bullies is one who uses power with the intention of harming or intimidating another person. A person who is a target, we, we use this term now instead of the term victim as it has a much less negative connotation. And bystander or upstander is the person or persons who are witnesses to bullying in the community. I'm going to read you a common scenario that I'd like us to keep in mind as we continue our conversation. The scene is the front lobby of a senior housing site where a group of women residents are sitting together and chatting. A new resident, Anna, walks into the lobby and while she's crossing, both she and a nearby staff member overhear another resident, Joan speaking to the others in a loud voice, easily overheard, saying, Look at how that woman is dressed and made up. She looks like a hooker. The group of women sitting with Joan, the bystanders, laugh nervously. Anna looks embarrassed and distressed and walks away in a hurry, while the staff member notices, looks uncomfortable, but also walks away. Does this sound familiar? We will come back to this later to talk about what can be done and learn how to effectively intervene if this occurs in your setting. So why are we discussing bullying today? This is a cartoon that was taken from the book, Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant by Roz Chast, and it depicts her parents' first meal in the dining room after moving into an assisted living facility. One woman is sitting alone at a table for six, and she says to Roz Chast's parents as they approach that, I'm sorry, these seats are all reserved. This sound, does this sound uh, familiar to you? Do you encounter this situation in your community site? Another common place that we've heard bullying often occurs is in bingo. And we received a letter to uh, the editor of a small town newspaper that does a good job of describing an experience that can happen in any setting. Dear editor, I am appalled at the people I met at my local senior center when I tried to attend bingo. I lived in this town all through the late 70s and 80s and had nice neighbors and friends. After returning following 20 years in California, I decided to go to bingo at the senior center to see if I would know anyone. I was treated very rudely to say the least. 
These women lied to me at every single table where I tried to sit down at one of the empty seats without coats, cards, coffee, or purses. I was not even allowed to pull up a chair on the end as I was told there would be no room for my cards once the chairs were filled. <clears throat> they were the most unfriendly, unwelcoming, mean, and rude group of women that I have ever met. There was no one sitting in those seats, and they lied that they were taken. I was there 40 minutes early to be sure to get a good seat. Shame on you mean people and what you did to a kind lady that was thinking of offering to volunteer at the center. You are a disgrace to your community. As all of you listening today know, in our communities, every person has the right to the peaceful enjoyment of their environment whether in a housing situation or a senior center. Bullying is a civil rights and human rights violation. It is serious. So what is bullying? It's a type of aggressive behavior in which someone intentionally causes another person injury or discomfort. It is a conscious planned attack. The individual who is bullied typically has trouble defending him or herself. There tends to be a power imbalance between the person who bullies and the person who's targeted. But we must keep in mind that the person who's targeted is not causing the bullying. What we do know is that one incident of bullying can cause psychological distress in a vulnerable individual. So an example that a resident service coordinator in senior housing shared with me was of a woman we'll call Carol, who moved into a housing site that had two buildings, building one and building two. Carol lived in building two. Programs were scattered between the two buildings. They both had large common rooms. And the first week Carol moved in, a luncheon was being held in building one and she saw it advertised in her building, Building 2. She went to attend, and as she walked into Building 1, was greeted by a gentleman sitting in the doorway, asking who she was and why she was there. She explained that she was new and was coming to the luncheon. And he said, we don't want people from Building 2 coming into our building. Even though she knew it was inaccurate and that she was welcome to attend. She didn't feel welcome and she left. It took two years before she discussed the incident with the resident service coordinator. And even after he reassured her that he would escort her into an activity, she still chose not to go to any programs that were held in building one. We also know that because bullying can be unpredictable, it can lead to a lack of control, a feeling of a lack of control. The person targeted may feel on alert and this hypervigilance can cause them great distress and anxiety. So I received a call from an older gentleman living in housing in the Midwest who reported that he set his alarm clock to get his mail at midnight so that he wouldn't encounter the bullies who hung around by the mailboxes in his housing site. I don't think anyone should be forced to live that way, certainly not someone in their later years. So what does bullying actually look like? It might be verbal, name calling, teasing, insults, threats, sarcasm, pointed jokes, it might be antisocial or relationship bullying, which would be shunning, exclusion, gossip, rumors, nonverbal body language. And it can and is with elders as well as with children, can be physical, pushing, hitting, pointing fingers, destroying property or stealing. I've known of in housing sites where people put decorations near or on their doors, particularly at holiday times, uh, other residents defacing the property or stealing it. That's bullying. And last but not least is cyberbullying. A growing number of older adults are on the computer 
are on social media sites such as Facebook. And when somebody posts intentionally hurtful messages, that's cyberbullying. This is a particularly uh, invasive type of bullying because you can't even go into your own apartment and shut the door and be free of it. So what do we know about people who engage in bullying? 85% of bullying occurs in front of other people. So we believe that people who bully do so in a quest for status within a group. The group confers the status. If the group does not tolerate or excuse the behavior, the person who bullies is less motivated to act aggressively. We believe that people who bully tear others down in order to build themselves up. They may be seeking control at a time in their life when they might feel powerless. Perhaps they've had a move from a single family dwelling into congregate housing. Perhaps they've had to stop driving. Often, moving into communal living requires serious adjustments around territory. Have you ever known of either residents in a housing site or participants in a senior center to try to take over a common seating area so that when somebody goes to sit down, they're told, you can't sit there. This is Ed's chair. He always sits there. I have heard of this going on at congregate meal sites, and it makes it very difficult for a new person to feel welcome to join in. It can also be people holding a private card game in a public space and not welcoming others to join in. The person who bullies tends to blame others for his or her problems. They give little thought to the actions, the damage that their words and actions cause. People who bully don't apologize. What we say is that bullying is an opposition to empathy. We also know that sometimes racism, ethnic stereotyping, sexual orientation, and religious differences might play a role. We do have to be very careful to not label or understand all inappropriate social behavior as bullying. We're going to talk a little bit more about people who have dementia or serious mental illness. They may engage in behavior that looks similar to bullying, but it's coming from another source and it's not a conscious attempt. But even if the behavior is not bullying and it causes distress to other people, it needs to be addressed so that the behavior doesn't escalate, possibly leading to violence. So staff needs to be alert to any kind of behavior causing problems in the community so that behavior does not escalate. The shifting populations in our older community can cause turf issues. There are people with many different needs. There's a mixing of different cultural, ethnic, and language groups. There can be misunderstandings that can lead to behavior like bullying. Have you heard of older adults making comments like, she should go back to the country she came from? These kind of comments need to be addressed when they're heard. It is important to discuss cultural norms with older adults, helping them to understand and find common territory between them. We have to be aware of how different cultures express themselves or how they may react to touch or personal space boundaries. As staff, we have to be creative and provide opportunities for diverse groups to come together. It might be hosting a multicultural night where different groups share food, music, photos, and traditions. Simple things like teaching people 
how to greet each other in their native languages or how to say happy birthday. Find ways to connect and build community. We know that in communities that do this, these efforts pay off. Another issue that more and more housing communities and uh, senior centers are finding challenging is dealing with volunteers. It, there have been problems with volunteers abusing the power that is delegated to them and engaging themselves in bullying behaviors. We also know that in these fiscal times, volunteers play a very important role allowing us to extend our services and, and programs. Uh, an example is the resident volunteers help each week to distribute surplus food from the local food co-op to residents in a building. And this has been occurring on weekends when staff's not present. There is suge a suggested donation of $2, but residents have reported that if they don't make this donation, they're sent to the end of the line. There have also been complaints that the better quality items are saved for friends of the volunteers. Many residents no longer use the food program because they feel intimidated. They have been the targets of bullying behavior. So it's important when utilizing volunteers to understand the implication. It can be a setup of a power imbalance. Know the resident that's offering to volunteer before you assign them a particular role. Proceed with caution, monitor and supervise. And understand the risk versus the benefit, the dilemma of welcoming assistance versus the possible abuse of power and proceed with caution. If necessary, you may need to reassign the volunteer to a different role or think about suspending a program if it can't be run without these volunteers. This was the case in several buildings I know of that had bingo that was held on the evening and it was all volunteer led. And there were so many problems with it that it was decided they would no longer allow building uh, bingo to be going on. As I mentioned a moment ago, it's important to be aware of the role of dementia and serious mental illness in evaluating bullying behavior in older adults. It can be difficult as situations are not always clear. And although any negative behavior must be addressed, if it's not bullying, it needs to be handled differently. So ask yourself, does this involve a conscious planned attack on another person? Or is the behavior more likely linked to a decrease in impulse control, losing that filter, or frustration with an inability to express their needs, their thoughts, including pain, or to complete a task they once easily did? Inappropriate behavior may also result from hallucinations or delusions and a sense that they are being threatened. If you are someone who's experiencing these kinds of issues, it's easy to misinterpret what's going on around you and to react to what you believe someone said or did by exhibiting aggressive or defensive behavior as if there were a perceived threat of danger. This can come across as bullying, but it is not the same. We also know that someone experiencing serious mental illness or dementia may have odd behavior or have difficulty reacting to social cues, which can make them more vulnerable to being bullied themselves. Those with mental illness are no more likely to harm someone than anyone else. They are in fact more likely to be targets of bullying or violence. Staff can often redirect those with dementia or use de-escalation techniques to calm those with mental illness. But staff needs to address any conflict in the building before it escalates to avoid it worsening. 
I want to show a video uh, that will demonstrate uh, an Atlanta resident of 71 years of age who lives in public housing and has a neighbor who's left her afraid to leave her apartment. You just, you just can't understand what it's like to live in fear. 71-year-old Bernadine Jones has a problem. She says she rarely leaves her Atlanta apartment because of a neighbor. I'm, I'm afraid of this moment. And just who is this neighbor? So crazy. It's Maria Zuravinsky, aged 87. Both women live in a public housing project for seniors in North Atlanta. Jones says the problem started when she accidentally stepped on rose bushes planted by Zuravinsky. Jones says Zuravinsky called her racist names and spit on her. That belongs to me. You know, plant that. That's my land. Zuravinsky was charged with battery in order to attend anger management courses. Just last month, police cited Zuravinsky again for battery and ordered her to stay 200 feet away from Jones. Jones says she hasn't abided by the order. Jones even pays a dog walker because of her fear of running into Zuravinsky. And when WSB-TV cameras caught up with Zuravinsky, they caught this. Hey, hey, don't you hit this dog! Since I moved here, my life has been just pure hell. An Atlanta Housing Authority representative says it's trying to evict Zuravinsky, but can't until a judge rules. Matt Friedman, Associated Press. So as you can see, this has impacted this resident emotionally and even financially. She now pays a dog walker as she's afraid to leave her apartment. Anyone can be the target of a bully. We know that this can cause great distress in older adults. It can lead to social withdrawal. Bullying can increase feelings of wanting to withdraw from the community and become isolated. This is a dangerous factor for depression in older adults. It can also lead to feelings of rejection, which in turn increases social isolation and leads to the older adults' desire to move out or perhaps to stop attending programs they once enjoyed. It can permeate throughout the site and lead to other older adults feeling unwelcome and unsafe to attend events. You may notice that a target of bullying experiences an increase in physical and functional changes. Bullying can impact sleeping and eating patterns, either too little or too much. It can also lead to feelings of anxiety, depression, and even thoughts of suicide. People who are vulnerable already to anxiety and clinical depression may begin to believe the abusive words they experience. This can lead to a worsening of their disorder. People who have been subjected to earlier trauma, including bullying or abuse as a child or young person, have a heightened vulnerability to bullying as an elder. When a person who bullies perceives weakness or vulnerability, they are quick to take the opportunity to use their taunting bullying behaviors to gain power and status. But remember, anyone can be targeted. When older adults are bystander to bullying, this may make them feel like they are not welcome as well and this can lead others to feel unsafe and foster insecurity. This will ultimately reduce their overall participation in activities at your site. Others may also experience feelings of guilt that they didn't intervene. If the bullying is not stopped, bullying behavior in general tends to increase the culture and environment of fear and disrespect is created. This goes to affect the staff as well. They may become targets of bullying and this tends to increase staff turnover. Studies show that 29% of those who experience workplace bullying voluntarily left their job as a result and another 19% were forced to quit when the work conditions were deliberately made worse. Residents and families may target vulnerable staff members if they feel they are in a position of power. 
Have you ever heard a resident say to staff, I can get you fired? Sometimes this involves racism or classism. Staff may in turn assert their power by bullying residents and the cycle perpetuates and a general atmosphere of fear and disrespect is created. The bottom line is it creates an environment in which no one wants to live and work. What is our goal? This cartoon shows three women sitting at a table welcoming the newbie, the newcomer to the senior center by saying, we've got a tea bag going, care to join? What I like about this is the newbie says, you can just wave it over the hot water for me. And it reminds me of my mother-in-law who felt every tea bag should be used at least a dozen times. But what is our goal? Our goal is to create and foster caring and welcoming communities with a sense of civility. We define civility as a place where there is tolerance of diversity and respect for other cultures, values, opinions, and lifestyles, where older adults can agree to disagree or agree that it is good that we are all different. This is everyone's responsibility. Encourage the older adults you work with to engage in discussions about ways to foster civility in their communities. Perhaps they could write up a suggested code of conduct for the site in accordance with existing guidelines to be shared with all participants or residents. Initially, when we began doing work on bullying, we had three levels of intervention that didn't include bystanders. And then we realized there are many more bystanders amongst our older adults uh, who are not bullies. And often there are no staff available. So we believe with proper training, bystanders are willing to intervene and that they can be effective. A few years ago, we did an evaluation of social bullying training that involved both staff and older adults in housing and senior centers. And the study confirmed that trainings were effective in building participant awareness of what bullying looks like, providing concrete effective strategies for intervening, increasing dialogue among staff about the importance of creating and implementing policies that clearly address bullying, and promoting positive changes for staff and residents participants who develop skills they were able to use in interceding in situations where social bullying was identified. To summarize, the best, best practice for successfully reducing bullying among older adults includes management leadership in creating policy and practices that explicitly addresses social bullying, and ongoing training and consultation to cement learning and support for all staff, not just resident service coordinators or social workers, but management, maintenance, van drivers, kitchen staff, as well as bystander training for older adults. So we're gonna start with what kind of interventions do you do for people who bully? Very important that at the organizational level, there's clear limits set that bullying behavior will not be tolerated, a zero tolerance policy. Make this clear and enforce these policies. If a participant continues to engage in bullying, they will no longer be able to attend programming and could be banned. If they're a tenant in a housing site, they will receive a lease violation and potentially face eviction. Model positive communication styles for older adults. Use language such as, we don't speak to people that way here at the Jones Senior Center. It violates our code of conduct that you have received. It is crucial to intervene if and when you see bullying behavior happening. Do not use the tactic of 
Mary, will you please come see me in my office? That is not effective. If you call the person into your office at a later point, they will A, minimize it, say that the other person knew they were just kidding, and not take responsibility for their behavior. The person who's targeted is unaware that anyone is defending them, and the bystanders are unaware that they're also uh, not seeing a role model of how to intervene when this occurs. This comes about because we've been trained to be respectful of elders and we don't want to embarrass them. What research has shown is that people who bully are not easily embarrassed and that this is the most effective way for changing their behavior. We also want to offer someone who bullies the possibility of uh, speaking with somebody to vent their frustrations privately and to be given ways of engaging in meaningful activity and to expand their social network in an attempt to help them develop empathy. It's very important that we always reward welcoming and anti-bullying behaviors to encourage and promote respect and civility in your settings. As we said, 85% of bullying happens in the presence of bystanders, so their role is crucially important. In order to be effective as a bystander, we need to recognize bullying and intervene as appropriate, which means intervening in the moment. One can defend the person who's being targeted, challenge the bullying behavior, or try to divert the person who's bullying. And we always want to reinforce management policies which say that bullying is not tolerated at our site. Be direct and keep it simple. If intervening involves physical behavior or feels unsafe, older adults should get help from staff or call 911. As we've learned, people who are targets of bullying can experience social anxiety and peer rejection. But it has been shown that when targets of bullying are defended and supported by another person, these negative feelings are greatly reduced. If the person who is bullying is not supported, that person's power is taken away. This is how we can all work together to interrupt the cycle of bullying. Remember that in housing settings in particular, people who are targeted can never get a break, and this constant state of hypervigilance can cause anxiety, depression, and increased social isolation. It's up to all of us to be interrupters and break the cycle of bullying. We also <clears throat> want to help older adults who are targets of bullying by building their self-esteem, teaching them how to speak up directly, helping them with assertiveness training can be useful. You can encourage the older adults in your setting to practice role playing so they can become familiar with assertive language to use when it's time to challenge a person who's bullying either them or another older adult. Remember that 10 to 20% of older adults each year are estimated to have experienced bullying and we need to help them learn how to take back the power and stand up to those who bully. I want to remind us that most older adults are not engaging in bullying, but we've shown the negative impact that bullying has when it occurs and there are far more older adults present than there are on staff. Therefore, to have an impact, you need to feel empowered to safely intervene when you witness bullying. So what do you think? Little quiz. What percentage of the time has research shown that bystanders can be effective in stopping a bullying episode? The answer is 50%.
and we also believe there is a cumulative effect of repeated interventions becoming more effective over time. This intervention works. It can strip people who bully of their power. So why don't bystanders speak up more often? Most bystanders passively accept bullying by watching and doing nothing. This gives the person who bullies an audience and the silent acceptance allows this behavior and the cycle of bullying to continue. These are some of the reasons that people don't speak up. Very often people simply don't know what the right thing to do is, which is why we believe bystander training is so important. What we have learned that people who do speak up and defend those who are being targeted are empathic, emotionally stable, and cognitively skilled. That is, they are someone who's good at thinking about situations, learning from them, and acting in a thoughtful and responsible way. Isn't this the way we all want to be? And isn't this what we should be encouraging all older adults to do? Another quick quiz. How long does it take to stop bullying when a bystander speaks up? 57% of the time, bullying stops in less than 10 seconds when someone intervenes on behalf of the person who's being targeted. And because 85% of bullying occurs in front of other people, it is so important to intervene. And it takes very little time for a bystander to make a difference. Let's revisit the scene that we described at the very beginning of this webinar. As you may recall, it's the front lobby of a senior housing site where a group of women residents are sitting together and chatting. A new resident, Anna, walks into the lobby and while she's crossing the lobby, both she and a nearby staff member overhear another resident, Joan, talking to the others in a loud voice, easily overheard, saying, look at how that woman is dressed and made up. She looks like a hooker. The group of women sitting with Joan, the bystanders, laugh nervously. Anna looks embarrassed and distressed and walks away in a hurry, while the staff member notices, looks uncomfortable, and chooses to ignore the situation and walk away. Let's have a take two and try that again with the staff member intervening perhaps more effectively. Look at how she's dressed and made up. She looks like a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Joan, here at the Apple Street Apartments, we don't speak about people that way. You are in a public space so please remember our code of behavior. Don't you think that might have made a difference both with Joan as well as Anna feeling supported? Let's try it another way in take three where a bystander is going to speak up. Look at how she's dressed and made up. She looks like a hooker. <laughs> Joan, give it a rest. Maybe we should take the time to get to know Anna. I remember how hard it is to be new here. Hey, Anna, please come to coffee hour tomorrow. Some of us really would like the chance to get to know you. We meet at 10 right here. I can only imagine how much more supported Anna felt with hearing this from one of her peers. But lastly, on take four, we're going to give Anna a chance to be assertive and speak up for herself. Look at how she's dressed and made up. She looks like a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, that's not really a kind way to welcome a new girl. I happen to like my sense of style. Good for you, Anna. You are a spunky gal. Hey, why don't you come to coffee hour tomorrow? Some of us really would like to get the chance to get to know you. We meet at 10 right here. How empowering that last take would be. So let's move on to, as staff, 
what can we do? Very important to get buy-in from the entire community, engaging all the staff. Everyone in the, meet, in the building needs training in how to intervene from the executive director to the maintenance staff to the van driver. Be sure that the language is clear in your employee training and in the lease and in your handbook that bullying will not be tolerated. Always follow up if bullying is reported. And most importantly, hold people accountable. In extreme cases, cancel activities such as the bingo I mentioned, or ban an older adult from a certain activity if that's necessary. If you are worried that bullying could escalate into violence, don't hesitate to involve the local police as harassment and bullying can be similar in nature. It's very important to remember that most older adults do not bully. However, we have shown the negative impact of bullying when it does occur. In most settings where bullying takes place, there are far more older adults than there are staff. Therefore, to have an impact, we need to empower older adults to safely intervene when they witness bullying. Any inroads that you can make will have a tremendous impact by speaking up for yourself and for others. This is the way we can stop bullying. The first step is in talking about what bullying is and naming it for that. So I encourage you to go forth and offer training in your communities to your residents uh, or participants and to other staff. JFNCS is here to help. If we can assist you in your efforts, please feel free to reach out to us. And also I wanna share a couple of other resources that are available on our website. The first is a guide for staff in housing, but also applies for working with residents with mental illness in community settings. And the second is a suicide prevention uh, guide. Thank you for your participation in today's webinar.